Hello everyone and welcome to Mayhem in Sandbox Realism Overhaul and Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. What you're about to see was originally broadcast on Twitch. I didn't actually expect to turn it into a YouTube video, but by request people wanted to see an N1 moon mission and it so happened that I did do an N1 moon mission on Twitch already. So I decided to cut up the video and uh, rework it for YouTube. So. The problem is, I used music that is not YouTube safe, so we don't have sound. Uh, so here you see the N1 with its 30 first stage engines, NK33s those are. And here I'm hot staging the second stage, as is appropriate. Uh, construction of this rocket was supervised by chat and by Raider Nick in particular, famous for various Kerbal mods. And so I took pains to get right. You see launch escape system separation and that's not quite how it works I don't think the fairings separate at the same time but it does look brilliant this is the same N1 that I used in my rocket profiles video and as far as I know all the numbers check out here we see the hot staging of the third stage and second stage separation the second stage had eight engines this stage has four and so yeah here we see Jebediah and Bill on their way to the moon we are not lined up with the moon as I would normally do from Cape Canaveral. In fact, we are like 50 degrees off, but that's all right because we're launching from Baikonur and we would have had a inclination difference anyway. There you saw third stage separation and you'll note that our apoapsis is high and that's because I used all the delta V from the third stage to boost us a little bit higher towards the moon. I made sure that when we launched, we were launching so that our apoapsis would point towards the moon so that we got the benefit from the higher apoapsis. Basically for the N1 mission the goal is to use all the delta V that you can and you really don't have much to spare. Remember the N1 could lift 95 tons to orbit and you have to do the whole moon mission with that. It does only land one person on the moon uh, sending two over there all together. One stays in orbit. Here you see the ignition of the block G stage which at this point is an NK19 but for reasons that will become apparent, I switched to the NK31. Uh, note that we have 800 meters per second left there, and yet I stage off the engine, and that's because it only has one ignition. So in order to make orbit around the moon, we have to use the block D here, and that cuts out the fuel that we need to make a landing, because the block D reignites, the block D has five ignitions, it reignites to slow down the lander. And you see it doing that there. The lander only has a little bit of fuel. Okay, well that, that didn't work out. The lander only has a little bit of fuel to do the touchdown. Most of its fuel is to get back into orbit. It has about 400 meters per second to actually make a soft touchdown. That means that 2200 has to be provided by the block D stage. But if we use block D to make orbit around the moon, we don't have that much. Remember, uh, in order to make orbit around the moon, the block D is not only slowing down the lander, it's also slowing down the Soyuz capsule that uh, we will want to return with. So it turns out that uh, even with a harsh impact, uh, this little guy manages to survive hardy Soviet engineering, I guess. This is a Radernik model, and uh, so the Soyuz capsule is also a Radernik model. And those are the ones you should look for. Uh, Soviet spacecraft is the is the mod name, I believe. And yeah, uh, but it's lost its engines, so there's nothing we can do about it right now. It was just sort of an amusement to see how it dealt with constantly bumping into the surface of the moon. So uh, I guess there's a good time to point out that you should probably watch my Twitch broadcasts as well, because I do stuff. In, on Twitch that I do not remake for YouTube, I do not uh, show on YouTube, and it's just sort of exclusive to Twitch, mainly uh, either because of the music, also because of the quality, because the quality of the video is 720p and less than what I normally record for YouTube. And anyway, I retry the landing here, but it's futile because the lander won't have enough to take off again. Remember, it only has 400 for touchdown, and then it has to have 2,200 to get back into orbit. Here I'm running the engines, trying to just practice a, a touchdown, but I know I've got a problem here. And we'll go back to the VAB and fix that. I stream Kerbal Space Program on Twitch on Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. 
And if you can't catch that time, then you can always catch the videos on demand, which are saved by Twitch for two weeks, so you can watch the streams that way. And actually nowadays they even have chat displayed on the side, so they record what chat said, which is nice. But uh, in some cases, some of the music might be muted in the videos on demand. Anyway, here we're back in the VAB, and I changed from the NK19 to its upgrade version, which is the NK31. You notice the NK19 has one ignitions, but the NK31 has two. I think we have discovered why. The reason why, of course, is because we really need that extra 800 meters per second that the NK31, well, even the NK19 can provide as long as you can reignite it around the moon. Now, there's kerosene and oxygen fuel all the way, so it's more or less... I mean, it's not going to boil off tremendously on the way to the moon. So here we go once again, the 30 engines on the first stage. Of course, even in Realism Overhaul, we don't have the harmonic resonance issue that actually rattled the real first stage. Um, so we are lucky in that. The second stage continues. Hot staging and separation. Hot staging went remarkably well on this. The, considering I was just using procedural parts. And finally, we boost up to a high apoapsis, once again above 4,000 kilometers on the apoapsis side. And uh, this time our relative inclination is not so bad, it's only 21 degrees, which should save us some trouble. And then we separate, and there is a block G. And you can see after boosting higher with the third stage, making sure we used all the fuel, it save us, saves us about uh, 700, 800 meters per second out of this stage, the block G. And this stage starts out with enough to finish the job and then mostly make orbit around the moon. Here I'm using RCS to get us closer, but you'll notice we have some sort of residual spin that RCS can't handle right now. And actually we take that spin all the way to the moon with us. It doesn't look too bad really. Now, do I know that they actually intended to use the Block G to make orbit around the moon? No, I have no idea, actually. Uh, but it's the only way I could figure out how to do it. And it also seems to make sense that they would uh, make sure that the new version of the engine had a second ignition just for this purpose. But I'm not entirely sure. It's just the only way I could figure out how to do it. So there we go. The Block G is done. It gets separated. And now we're on the Block D. And uh, here I'm unlocking the fuels, of course. And it completes orbit, it only had a little bit to do. You can see with the whole Soyuz and the lander, it has about 1,300, more than a little more than 1,300 meters per second. So we definitely don't want to use too much out of it. But once we go to just the lander after transferring, in this case, Valentina, a Jeb is stranded on the moon in this case. Uh, and actually, Bill is remaining in orbit, so they're just hanging out there. Um, after transferring Valentina, actually they would have eva to transfer and the Soyuz would have separated and tried to dock with the lander and done all that, but I saved myself some trouble using the um, ship manifest instead. Uh, a, a little bit of a cheat, but it wouldn't have been too hard to spin around and redock. Actually, the docking port magnetism on these models is very good. So there we have a killing of horizontal velocity and then we're going straight down after that. This is for simplicity's sake to dump the block D stage because and actually it turned out that we had some despair in the block D stage but of course we have to have enough time to clear it off and do the safe landing with the lander. So here we go. Uh, the Delta V is not reading correct there for reasons I'm not too sure about but it'll read correct after we dump the landing legs. So Unlike with the Apollo lander, which had a separate ascent and descent stage, in the case of this lander, um, it's just the landing legs that get dropped off. <laughs> it's just uh, that, that bottom section. None of the engines actually get dropped off. So that was possible because this was only a single person lander. If you have a heavier capsule on top, it's harder to do that. But it was possible in this case. The landing leg section also had a little bit of fuel. It actually had the fuel for the landing. And then the, this portion only had the fuel for the ascent. 
So technically there wasn't a, really we did sta stage off the descent stage, that was the block D, if you want to think about it that way. Okay, I didn't actually have uh, Valentina plant a flag by the way, so um, she didn't get to do that. I was uh, a little bit in a hurry at this point in the live stream, I just wanted to get the mission done. So here we are with Rendezvous. The engines, um, the center engine on the lander has a fair amount of ignitions, I think like 15, and so I had plenty of ignitions to spare. There are two secondary engines on the sides, and those only had, I think, uh, two or three. So they were mainly meant to make sure that it was able to land safely, I think. Uh, so uh, just in case they're coming in um, too quickly, it would they would be able to ignite the secondary engines to land safely on the moon. Maybe it would also give a boost on the way up, I'm not sure. So we docked and then it was time to make the trip home with the Soyuz. And the Soyuz spacecraft had just barely enough to return home. So if you do use a lot on the docking, and uh, it's uh, the thrusters are actually very powerful, so you have to tune them down, thrust limit them, to make sure they don't overdo it. Uh, it's very easy to run out of fuel and not be able to return home. Uh, you have to be very careful about it with this thing. So anyway, we did manage to make the return journey. You can see a uh, periapsis of 62 kilometers and then uh, staging off the service module and the orbital module here and just having the descent module and that little familiar capsule but uh, here's where things went wrong. Now there's a number of possibilities for why it went wrong. First of all I don't think I mounted the parachute properly. I did not have Raider Nick's guidance for how to put this together and I'm not entirely sure I did it right. Um, but in general, I think descent mode was messing with me. You can, descent mode is what's actually tilting us up there. You can see uh, Smart ESS is not on, we've got SAS on, but descent mode gives us a certain angle, and I don't think that was a very good angle. So here I am turning descent mode off because I'm a little bit worried, and that might have been a bad idea. That's the parachute going right there. Now here we're pretty much flush to the airflow with the heat shield, and the heat shield is overheating. This is not unusual in realism overhaul, but it, it's not working very well for me here. And uh, well, if you wondered why I didn't just redo the entire mission and make a YouTube video out of it, that's why. Uh, I haven't uh, fixed the problem that uh, obviously led to the demise of my crew. I was quite salty after uh, after doing the long mission and figuring everything else out and having that happen, um, it might have been a heat shield problem. You know, there, there's all sorts of things that could have gone wrong there, and I'll have to look into it. But uh, since it, uh, the N1 moon mission was a request in the comments recently, I decided to cut this video and make sure you know that I had tried it. I had given it a try. Uh, and I will continue giving it a try. So I'll remind you that uh, you should make sure to check out the Twitch broadcast to see what I'm really up to. And on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.